a very fancy little box, nice patterns on it. There's the bottom and then the top, so it's very pretty and made of cloth, it's a nice soft. And this is a giveaway really, it's something that the Chinese always use for um, shutting a box and holding it like a little latch. Usually originally made of bone or ivory, but now it's plastic, you just unfook it and open it. So let's see what's inside it. It lifts the lid and then, oh my goodness, something extraordinary that. That's very unexpected. Well, there's two things there. There's this thing here and this thing here. What are they? Well, this is made of bronze instead of brass because it's not magnetic, but this is a little magnetic piece, apparently, but it looks just like a spoon. When you place it on here, look at that. Oh, it is a magnet. Look at that. It has a compass, even, because it's pointing somewhere. Well, this is um, a Chinese compass. What's amazing about this is it appears in the text of China oh, about three or four hundred years before the present era, that's about two and a half thousand years ago, and even then they said it wasn't novel, it had probably been invented a few centuries earlier than that, I think, probably. But it's some um, south-seeking, that's interesting. The Chinese were wholly interested in the south, which is good, and there's light and things down there, and the back was where the north is where all the Huns and the invaders came from, so they didn't want to know about that. So they preferred to have one that pointed to the south, and as I turn it, it still steadfastly points to the south, south-seeking compass. This version, incidentally, wasn't used for navigation because you know, ship rocking about it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't really work. They had to have suspend them on a piece of um, string or something. This was used on the land. It was not used actually for um, looking around or trying to um, work, work out where north and south were. It was to uh, follow their great belief in geomancy, which is aligning their houses and their streets and their doorways to face in different directions, to, as, to pick up the emanations they thought of it as in, the, in, in the Earth's field and make sure that they were correctly done. So it appealed to their sense of proper behaviour and proper building. Both cities and houses were, were faced in the right direction, north or south, whatever it was. It's a very, very fine bit of work. And to consider how old it is, oh, at least a thousand or more than half a thousand years before Europe discovered the compass, it was available in China, and it's uh, being reproduced here in a beautiful way, metal upon metal, but this one here, the high curvature incidentally is what makes it work so well, because it means that the actual point of contact is minimal and there's almost no friction, so that's why it's working and wobbling around so much. But it's always and faithfully pointing to the south, what we think of as the South Pole, the Southern Hemisphere, because that's what the Chinese preferred to do. It makes a wonderful working compass for nowadays, but also a lovely bit of history too, because it goes back so far to say to people, this is probably the world's first magnetic compass. And it was made in China, and this is a very, very fine reproduction of it, and a nice box for it too. It's something I picked up about 20 years ago, and I've, I've, I've treasured it ever since, I think, and shown it to many, many people. The Chinese magic compass, I call it. Uh -huh.